uh, 8 o'clock, so I think we are uh, going to start with another edition of This Happened. And for those of you who haven't uh, been at an event of us before, This Happened is about having ideas is easier than making them happen. Um, so today four different speakers are going to talk about how they made their design project happen. So uh, they reveal a little bit of their design process. Uh, and maybe also the, the ups and the downs of what they experienced. And the presentations are short, uh, 10 minutes exactly. And Jan Willem brought us this nice new timer, <laughs> so the speakers are also aware of their time, because we don't want to lose any time uh, for the questions. Uh, after each presentation you will have 10 minutes to ask very critical questions to our speakers. Uh, so that you can find out more about the th topics you are actually interested in um, and that they wouldn't have time to put in their presentation. Um, so yeah, I would like to invite the first speaker of tonight to the stage, Madeleine Berlis. Um, Madeleine uh, did a project back in, what was it, 2015, some years ago when she was still doing her master's in Germany, in Coburg. Um, and she asked her, has asked herself the question, what does the, um, the future of meat look like? And will we actually still eat meat in 2050? So she made in the end the video installation with five different scenarios about the future of meat, in which she invites visitors uh, for an open discussion uh, about how they see their perspective. Um, yeah, she will talk about how she went from product designer to social designer and everything she learned from that. So, Madeleine, please come to the stage. I think I'll skip to, through a couple of slides here because they're not mine. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Alright, uh, thanks for the introduction. I don't have much time, so it's really nice that you already gave a little bit away. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm Madeleine. I currently work at the uh, Afdeling Buitengewone Zaken, but now I'm going to present to you uh, the future of meat. It's um, a couple of years ago already, but um, yeah, it was my master thesis. Um, and yeah, I will tell you about uh, my process, about how I started off with the product as a typical product designer would do, and then uh, how I end up, ended up with an installation. Uh, but first I'm going to show you a little video, because then you get an idea of the final uh, product or installation. Welcome to the future of meat. This video installation aims to get people thinking about meat consumption in the future by actually visualizing five possible scenarios. You'll become a time traveler, ending up in the year 2050 by traveling through a dark tunnel. Once arrived in the future, you can see the five future scenarios sitting at a small dinner table. Five kitchens are presented, less and organic meat, insects, lab meat, eating vegan, and a future where you will do nothing and continue the way we currently consume. In a quiet area with stools and newspapers with facts about the scenarios, you can overthink the scenarios and choose your own favorite one. With the future of meat, we hope that we can motivate people to act in a way that will help make their ideal future a reality. Yeah, so these are the five uh, future scenarios that you just saw. Um, lab meat, insects, less than organic, no meat, and the doom scenario, doing nothing. Um, and the aim was to create an open dialogue between people. Uh, so instead of looking at each other's plates, people would collectively look into the future. Um, and well, this installation started as a, uh, as a master thesis, but it's grew way bigger than that. Uh, eventually we, sh we have shown it at 15 locations in uh, 
four different countries in Germany, Austria, Netherlands and the USA and we sometimes still get emails with uh, uh, questions um, for TED uh, X uh, events etc. Mm -hmm. So we were really at the, the right spot. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm saying we because I did this together with my sister. She is a filmmaker and so I did the design and uh, building of the installation and, and she um, wrote the script and directed the uh, five films. Um, I'm going. I'm showing you now um, a picture of the Coburg Bratwurst um, because I did my master thesis in Coburg, uh, and that's a small city in northern Bavaria. And all small cities in northern Bavaria have their own sausage. Um, and yeah, the whole food heritage of Bavaria is mainly meat. Um, so that was kind of the context I came in with uh, when I when I went there because I am. Um, uh, yeah, went there for my masters, um, and um, but the thing was that the, the students over there were actually more puzzled about the fact that I uh, wanted to combine a design with such a like so societal complex topic than the kind of the controversial um, uh, idea behind the, behind the meat itself. Um, so, uh, but, and the only one that was really, um, knew that it would, would be good was my, uh, was my mentor, Herr Kampe, and, um, and he helped me along the way. Um, and, uh, well, I will fast forward a little bit. Um, this was the moment just after my research phase, and I was in, on a kind of a crossroads between um, if I would want to go into the direction of letting people or overthink their meat consumption, or have having a focus on uh, vegetables and legumes. Um, and um, I realized that, well, before motivating people to eat more vegetables, uh, you would have to create a different mindset, because then otherwise they would just eat more vegetables and also eat, still eat m uh, the same amount of meat. Um, and I'm yeah. And the mindset in Coburg was very meat uh, focused. And well, in the rest of the world, still is as well. I think in at least in Western countries, um, yeah. So that I decided to be um, my main uh, focus. Um, yeah, and um, well, I was back then very focused on product design. So product designer starts with designing a product. Um, so, for instance. Um, I thought of um, clothing for vegetarians so that they can show their identity. Um, yeah, but soon I realized that if you really want people to cut back on their meat consumption, that they kind of need some sort of mind-blowing experience and uh, like an experience you can be completely cut up in. And um, and a product is, is is something you can hold in your hand, but does not have the same effect as something that really surrounds you. Um, and this is one of my first sketches that went into the direction of the uh, installation um, where you could walk into. Um, but then I so so then I realized okay it has to be an installation, but I never made an installation before. So um, then my question was well how do you make like an ex experience like that? Um, and I talked with a lot of interior and de decor designers. And they taught me that you need to see an installation as a story you want to tell, like a scenario, and you have to think of every uh, little step of the way. <coughs> uh, yeah, so this is eventually the story I came up with. Uh, you start in the present and you, you read about articles that are about stuff that is happening right now. Um, and then uh, you, get a t you, uh, you get a ticket for the future and you travel through a tunnel to the year 2050. And um, yeah, from there uh, you can look at the, all the scenarios um, and afterwards there is a ref time to reflect about it and to talk <coughs> about it with people. Um, and I really noticed that because of this story people were uh, suddenly talking about this topic with each other. Um, the only thing was that this installation was, uh, as you can see over there, um, about uh, 100 square meters. <laughs> uh, 
Um, and I built that actually all by myself with a little bit of help of others um, over a couple of weeks. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, and this was the end result, as you also saw in the video. But then after building it up twice, uh, I got a bit tired of it. <laughs> it was a bit of a hustle to uh, constantly rebuild it. It took a, a couple of days and um, well, if you really if you work a lot with societal uh, uh, projects, then normally there is not that much money. So, yeah. So then I decided uh, I, uh, to um, yeah look at how to present this installation in different type kind of ways. And this is also my <coughs> finishing up slide. I'm actually in time, so you have more time for questions. <laughs> um, yeah. So. Um, yeah, these show all, all different um, uh, shapes that the installation has, has been in. So we once had, um, uh, well, we, we, we had a, a, a smaller version of only 10 square meters at the Dutch Design Week. Um, we had a, um, a tastery in San Diego combined with the five films in, in, in a different area we couldn't um, move everything to uh, the USA, so we had to improvise there as well. Uh, we did a, we organized a three-day symposium about the future of meat in Vienna. Um, we even set up uh, five containers at the digital festival a couple of years ago, um, and 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 also I gave a couple of workshop uh, uh, workshops about it. Um, and what I really learned from that is that the like the, more, the most important part of the installation is really the experience and well, the, and the movies are the biggest part of that, I think. Um, but then this experience you can still shape in a way that um, fits to the venue or the, the, the event that, um, that it's supposed to be on. And, and it can still give the same experience, it can still open the dialogue between people. Um, but then it's also scalable and you don't have to build it up for two days. So, that was it. <laughs> Thank you.